Today I will be turning this stack of rough walnut and cherry lumber into five beautiful tea boxes. Each box features a glass lid with 95 degree stop hinges and a continuous grain match on all four corners. I will take you step by step through my process for making mitered boxes with a four corner grain match. Let's get started. The project starts the same way most of mine do, by milling rough lumber to be flat and square. Parts are squared up on the table saw, and the stock to be used for the box sides is ripped to a final width of 3 and 3 quarter inches before moving on to resawing. To get a four corner grain mesh, I start with a board that is long enough to make one short and one long box side. That board is resawn, and the resawn faces are opened up to become the outside of the box. This results in each book matched end having a perfect grain match. Guy Dunlap at Guy's Woodshop has an excellent video on making four corner grain match boxes, and is where I learned this technique. I will link to his video in the description below. If you have access to a bandsaw, I recommend using that for resawing. I don't have one, so here are some tips that I have learned on resawing with a table saw. Always reference the same face of the board against the table saw fence. Both edges of the board must be square to the reference face. Take small passes, raising the blade a little bit each time. Before the final pass, insert a wedge that's the same thickness of the saw curve to prevent the blade from being pinched. And finally, using a thin curved blade will remove less material, leaving a closer grain match when completed. The process of resawing can release a lot of internal stress in a board, causing it to warp or twist. So after all parts were sawn, I let them rest for a couple days before completing the final milling. After resting, the resawn faces of the sides get a very light pass on the joiner to remove any tool marks. The opposite face of all parts are then planed to a final thickness of 3 eighths of an inch. The bottom panel will be housed in grooves cut into both the edges of the bottom and the inside face of the box sides. After cutting the bottom panels to size, I set the fence to the same distance from the blade as the thickness of the blade curve. A cut is made on the inside face of each side, approximately 3 16 of an inch deep. The same setup is used to cut grooves into each edge of the bottom panel. This leaves the bottom panel to float in the groove, allowing for any wood movement that could occur. I will be pre-finishing the sides and bottom with Rubio Mono Coat prior to cutting the miters and assembling the box. Not only are parts easier to prep and sand this way, but pre-finishing will make it easy to clean up any glue squeeze out on the inside corners that will be inaccessible until the lid is cut off. The last step before finishing is to cut a groove to accept the glass top. A 7 and a quarter inch blade from my circular saw made for the perfect size curve to fit the sheet glass. I cut this groove after any finishing prep as it leaves such a thin tab that could easily break off while sanding or scraping. Rubio Monocoat is a hard wax oil that forms a molecular bond with the wood fibers. It is important to remove any loose dust before applying it or the product will bind to the dust instead of your workpiece. It is a good idea to spend some of your hard earned dollars and clean off your bench while you're at it. Application of Rubio Mono Coat is quite easy. Just wipe on a thin layer with a white Scotch-Brite pad. Let it sit for a few minutes, then wipe off any excess of the cloth and buff lightly with another Scotch-Brite pad. When using this finish, it is only recommended to sand to 120 grit to allow for adequate binding of the finish to the wood. I was concerned this would not feel completely finished, but was pleasantly surprised with how it felt once the product was applied and buffed out. I can now finally get ready to cut the miters. I start by squaring up the ends of each set of sides and cutting them to length. Both halves are cut at the same time to ensure an equal length is removed from each part to maintain the grain match. The boxes will have a final outside dimension of 9 by 5.5 inches, so the parts are cut to exactly 14.5 inches long.
Miters are then cut using a cross-cut sled I made specifically for this type of joinery. For these cuts, I installed an 80-tooth cross-cut blade to get nice clean miter cuts. I sneak up on the first cut so it just meets the corner without removing any length. The piece is then slid to a stop block and the next cut made. I have the blade height set so it just scores the face grain, keeping the grain continuity intact. The remaining cuts are made using the same process and additional stop blocks. With all the parts cut, I can begin the glue up process. Sides are referenced against a straight edge clamped to my bench, and a piece of blue painter's tape secures each joint. The top and bottom are placed in the grooves and the box is folded up using another piece of tape to secure the last joint. If you are enjoying this build, please consider hitting the like button below and leaving a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on this project. Overall, I was very pleased with how the miter joints came together, with only a few minor gaps like this one on a couple boxes that I will address later on. Now that the glue is dry, the lid can be cut free. I set the fence to 3 quarters of an inch and put blue painter's tape around the box to help prevent any tear out. Wedges are again used to prevent the blade from being pinched. This step always makes me nervous as a mistake here could ruin the whole box. Some cleanup is needed after cutting off the lid to remove blade marks left from the saw. I first used a hand plane to go around the top of each box and lid, then finished with a little sanding on a piece of granite I use as a flat surface. There are a few little details to clean up any glue squeeze out and fix any imperfections in the miter joints. A big motivation for using Rubio was the ease of touching up sanding marks and cut edges at this stage in the build. Simply wipe on a little more finish and allow it to sit for a few minutes. After buffing off any excess, it blends in seamlessly with the rest of the finish. With the exterior of the boxes complete, the next step is to make the divider grid. Stock is milled down to the thickness of my table saw blade curve and cross cut to final dimension. With the blade set to half the height of the divider stock, the short segments get a single cut in the center of their length, while the long segments get cuts one third of the way in from each end. These pieces fit together and the grid is friction fit into the box. After the divider parts are finished, a small dab of CA glue is used to hold the pieces square. The final step in the build is to attach hinges. Each box got brass stop hinges that hold the lid open at 95 degrees. I have included links to the hinges I used in the description below. On one box, I used JB101 hinges from Brusso Hardware. These are high quality hinges installed into a hand cut mortise. I have used them in the past and really like them. They have a great fit and finish and in my mind, 
a mortise hinge shows a finer level of finish. The only downside is that they are a little pricey, so I tried a different hinge on the rest of the boxes. The mortise locations are marked with a marking knife and cut with a chisel. The location is transferred to the lid and the second half of the mortise is cut. These are an inexpensive surface mounted stop hinge. Installation is very quick and function wise they get the job done. Fit and finish is not nearly the same and being surface mounted they have a different look than a mortised hinge but do provide an affordable option. I am really happy with how these boxes turned out. Between the continuous grain match and getting tight miter joints there were plenty of challenges along the way but I learned a lot and look forward to the day I get to build another one.